There we go. Deep dive. All right, fake ghost fire robot. Um, yeah, if you're not playing Zelda stuff, what are you playing lately? Is it still just Overwatch? Uh, maybe you tried something else, something new. Yeah, it's been Fire Emblem for me, then Zelda. Uh, I will go to Overwatch next. But, I mean, that's not new. I'm curious to see what the port is like, but not a new thing. No new games, I don't think, until... I mean, maybe something will get super cheap on the eShop that I'll just pick up, but... I think the other... The only thing is, uh... Yeah, Luigi's Mansion on Halloween. So I got a couple weeks here. Ah. Jerk bats. All right, there. Overwatch just because it's a regular group in my own time. I tried Detroit Become Human and Darksiders 3. I'm pretty sure I have Detroit Become Human as a PlayStation Plus thing. What did you think of it? Like, I loved Heavy Rain. I never got around to playing Beyond Two Souls. But I do have it. I got that as a PlayStation Plus game. And I'm pretty sure I got Detroit also as a PlayStation Plus game. Honestly, not grabbed by it so far. Okay. I played the demo of it at Fan Expo, and I... I thought it was alright. I just haven't gotten around to it. Streaming has also made the games I play, like, really weird in terms of... Um, I think just now knowing how many paths there are is sort of paralyzing. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole point of those games is just... You're not supposed to see all the paths at once, and you're not necessarily supposed to play for the perfect path. You just are supposed to make those decisions in the moment, if you as if you were in those real-life scenarios, and just see what happens. Oh, I'm pretty sure I did that completely wrong. Let's try that again. But I hear you. Sometimes that analysis paralysis can really get to you. Right, but th then they show you an actual flowchart after the first chapter. Ah, this is true. I remember playing a demo at Fan Expo where it's like, you could have done this, this, and this. Oh, I remember this one. So this is the one where you have to fight the same boss like four times. And that was the fourth room, I believe. Ugh. I remember getting stuck in this one. I've already had no shortage of not proud moments in this game, but I remember this dungeon being one that messed me up pretty good. In games like Witcher, I love the idea of just making a choice and living with it because it doesn't beat you with the alternatives. Okay. I, I can definitely see the appeal of that and just letting it go. Heavy Rain was like that. It didn't show you the alternatives at all. And so I never felt that pressure to do anything else. I didn't get a perfect run in Heavy Rain either. Uh, there was... Uh, one character who did not make it to the end, without spoiling too much, but I did the thing, there was a happily ever after, exactly, and I loved Heavy Rain. Okay. Yeah, Heavy Rain was so good, and that kind of opened my, my eyes to that whole other sort of modern adventure game. It was more about telling the story and the cinematics and making those choices it did have some really clunky parts but I thought it was so cool at the time and did some really daring stuff that hadn't really been done up until that point point. and it was probably the last game my dad really got into like he would sit there and just watch us play and he just enjoyed it because it was like this is like a movie to him
But yeah, I still, when I think of Heavy Rain, I think of the one moment where, and this is kind of spoilers if you haven't played Heavy Rain. The, it was one of the first challenges that the kidnapper puts you through where you have the choice of cho chopping off your finger to get the next hint. And the game gives you all these things that you can interact with in the world to, like, mitigate some of the, the, the damage. Um, like, you could, like, tie off your arm and... Uh, drink alcohol and um, like cauterize the wound and all that like cauterize that area to make it not hurt as bad and I I was not in classic jet fashion I was not particularly perceptive and I just chopped the finger off <laughs> and he, it was one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen in a video game of Ethan just writhing around missing a finger uh, just rolling around for like 10 minutes straight I thought that was, it was really gross, but at the same time, it was cool that the effect was so dramatic of, like, there was, there was variance between doing all the things to minimize the pain of chopping off your finger and just chopping off your finger. This is the one. Having played games for so long, it can be kind of funny to have the, to guess when the time, when time is a thing or not. Mmm, yeah. Of that style of game, like that heavy rain style of game, uh, what would you say is your favorite? Like, I would say in that group would be, like, all the Telltale games, Life is Strange would be in there for me. I I have very strong feelings for Walking Dead Season 1. Ark, I can't beat you. I'm out of here. Yeah, Heavy Rain I feel very strongly for. Walking Dead Season 1. I played Season 2 and I thought it was fine. And I didn't play the rest of them. At some point I should though. And I loved Life is Strange. I've got what's inside this box. Come and get it if you can. Master. 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 All right, let's go see what's in here. Of the ones I've played, probably Heavy Rain, Walking Dead, I started, but it never hooked me. Oh, okay. That's fair. That, that game gave me all the feels. I think I was already into Walking Dead fatigue by then. Okay. Like, I didn't read the comic. I read, like, one issue of the comic. Well, one trade paperback, and I, I really didn't like the comic. But I loved the TV show for a while. But, yeah. I think at some point during the Negan saga, I just burned out, and I couldn't do it anymore. But yeah, I, I was actually, like, still very into The Walking Dead at that point, and then bought the game, and it was a tangential story, and I loved it. Okay, so we should mark these off. I love the comic and hated the show. Okay, so we're, like, the inverse. Maybe it's just because we were started. I started with the show, and maybe I would feel, probably would feel differently if I started the other way. Oh. Oh, I can't. Okay. So this is not... I can't do anything here right now. Because, yeah, the boss is right there. I definitely don't have the thing. So... Let's go back. Uh-oh. Huh? This rock has a keyhole. You should come back with it. I don't actually know how I get out of here now. Oh, I have to be able to escape here. Okay. Okay. Where does this go, then? Heart. Wait. What? No. I used too many symbols. Now I don't know which is which. Hey, we got an arrow. But 
But yeah, Jesse, if you like that style of game, the one I would recommend Life is Strange. Uh, what I I like about it is that it's... I mean, there's some sci-fi supernatural stuff, but the core of it is it's a game about real people in real-life drama. And it really hit home for me. Like, I, I, I realized I d hadn't played anything that felt so down-to-earth in that way before. And it was it was amazing for that. Oh. So I know I can't do this thing yet because I don't have Like I can run through here, but it's not gonna matter. At least I don't think it's gonna matter. Alright, so if it's not gonna matter, then where do I Okay. I think I know where I have to go. Oh, I did play that. It was good, too. Is there a sequel coming out? There is a sequel out. So, there was a free-to-play... There was a free demo, or free prequel called, uh, like, Captain Spirit. That's out now. I played that. And Season 2, they're in, like, the fourth or fifth episode now. And I'm waiting to play that at some point. I think I'll wait for the full season to come out. And hopefully they put it out on Switch, and then I'll play it there. Hey, we got a piece of power. It doesn't really help me right now. This is one where the, the puzzle has to be reset a bunch of times. Ah! Yeah, I remember my brother, uh, years before I actually played it, recommended Life is Strange. He kept saying, like, oh, it's so good, you gotta try it. And I I don't remember why I didn't play it. Well, I, I just, it didn't sound that interesting to me, to be honest. And then I got, I think someone gave me a code for it. I think JJ gave me a code for it. And then I tried it out and was like, oh, dude, this is amazing. Okay, so I can't do anything here right now because I don't have the thing, but that's okay. Actually, we should have marked that. So we're going to go spade and... Oh, shoot. I don't remember where that other door is. Oh, I'm such a fail. Ah. Okay. Spade. There. Mm. Nothing I can do here at the moment. Oh, okay. I, I remember this. Ah. Open that later, but for now we've got this thing to do. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Fake ghost power robot. Two things. Uh, one, do you plan on going to EGLX, which is happening in Toronto in like two weeks? Uh, video game convention going on for three days. I still have plans of going. I haven't bought my tickets yet. I I keep um keep slacking on that but I do want to go at least one day to try it out I've been to a lot of like comic and pop culture conventions but I haven't been to a a strictly video game convention yet so I would like to see what that experience is like Bum, 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 bum. Hey, we got a map. I think I'll be away for a second Thanksgiving weekend, so I haven't planned on. Ah, okay. It would be cool. All right. If I do go, I will. I will talk about it a lot on stream for sure. 
And then, do you have any plans on Saturday, November the 2nd? Because that is going to be the day of our Extra Life Marathon. We will be... Yeah, streaming for 25 hours straight, so drop by any time on that day. Uh, we will have a lot of people over at the house playing video games, and... There will be some fun stuff happening as well. And some board game stuff as well, and party games, and... You'll probably watch me slip into madness at 3 o'clock in the morning. Will not be my finest hour for sure. <laughs> But it's for a great cause, for the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, and... Gulp, you found me? You're a really pesky kid, you know that? Alright, this boss is really easy to beat. It's kind of redundant, you have to beat him like four times. I'll try to leave a laptop tuned in somewhere. Awesome! Arg, I can't beat you. I'm out of here. Okay, where was the third? We just were at the third room. Oh, okay, it's up there. E yes, let's go to that. Oh. Back of the dome piece for that. Alright. Number three, let's go. Gulp, you found me? You're a really pesky kid, you know that? Pretty sure he said that last time, too. Yeah, this one really confused me. I didn't understand the mechanics of this dungeon until I, I had to read the guide for this one. Hmm. Ark, I can't beat you out of here. Oh, we already got the, the prize for that. Now we just need to go to room number four. And it's going to be one of these stairways. I'm pretty sure it's the heart stairway that I erroneously marked as a heart. Or was it? Or maybe it was this one. I feel like it was here. Where we... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't do anything else here right now. Let's... Oh. Alright, let's go play a tune. Nope. Marin Song. Oh, that doesn't... I thought that takes us back to the dungeon, I, or the start of the dungeon. I guess it does not. Alright. Then... Let's try... Yeah, I've got to get to the... Try these other stairs anyway, so... Let's do that. Ah. Is there any other big games you're looking forward to between now and the end of the year? Yeah, for me it was... Yeah, Pokemon, Luigi's Mansion. Those are the two. Also, we should change the, the symbolism on this map. And this should be... Let's make that a diamond. And where is the other end of the diamond? Over here. What? Alright, so I, I've, lar I've messed up my map. <laughs> Large...
Okay. We just have to find the right stairwell, and we should be all right. But key is finding the right stairwell. Oh. So yeah, let's go left. And let's mark the map properly. What will we use for this one? Let's go square. Oh, this one goes to the boss. No, we don't want this one. I know where that one goes. Wait, what? I have confused myself so hard. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the boss one. 2019 has been a bit slow for me. 2020 looks killer, though, gaming-wise. Off the top of my head, I can't name much 2020 stuff, but I do know I am looking forward to the next generation of consoles. And so I would look forward to the PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox, and... I hope Sony continues to Final Fantasy 7 and The Last of Us 2. Ah, yes. I don't I didn't watch the last day to play to see what that is like. Like I like The Last of Us 2. I thought that game was a solid uh I thought that was like an 8 out of 10. I don't think I liked it as much as most people did, but I thought it was really good. And I'm sure at some point I will play The Last of Us 2 and enjoy it as well. But I'm not like, yes, I have to do this. Final Fantasy 7. I, I have no history with that franchise, really. I do have a PlayStation Classic, so I can play Final Fantasy 7. Hey, we got the hookshot finally. But I did see the the remake at Fan Expo, and it looks amazing. That looked like a really cool game. Almost to the point where I'm like, you know what? Maybe I tried this one instead. <laughs> that said, I think the packaging is really misleading. I they do they do not state that it is a part one anywhere on it. It just says Final Fantasy VII Remake. And they don't tell you that it's only like the first bit of the game that they remade. Man, it must be hard to be a Square fan. And I guess, like, they compensate because they make games people like. Ugh. <laughs> like, they make games that so many people love, but at the same time, th their games take forever to come out. Hey, we have a thousand rupees. We can actually... buy the... the, the bow and arrow now. Which we should do. But let's go up. Final Fantasy 13 broke my heart. Oh, uh, yeah. That was another one. I think that one took like a super long time to come out. And I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, yeah, that game is super linear for the first 50 hours or so before it finally opens up. I tried so hard to like it and it was just a turn. <laughs> Sorry, some dribble down my face there. Huh. There's a lot of render lag there. More than usual. I wonder what that's all about. It shouldn't impact the stream too much, though. It opens up for, like, one chapter, and then it gets even more linear. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. And that's when I quit. Mm. Yeah, so that sounds like you are already... Like, pretty deeply invested in the game, based on what I have heard. Like, based on what I've heard, it's like 50 hours before you get to that part where it opens up. Let's go for swim! Oh, 
A literal gauntlet on a giant dino monster on a walled highway. Uh. Yeah, the only Final Fantasy experience I have was I played... I tried streaming Final Fantasy 1 on the NES Classic. Um, our mutual friend, Mike, watched me stream that for a bit. It was really embarrassing. I... I didn't realize until like an hour into the stream that I didn't have any equipment on me. Like I didn't equip a sword or armor. It was, I was really confused <laughs> and I didn't understand what was going on. I did play like an hour and a half of Final Fantasy three and that game seemed really cool. The whole sort of like cyberpunk post-apocalyptic future and with the mechs and stuff like it, it seemed Unlike most RPGs, especially at the time, and I can see how that game meant so much to so many people. Get that money. I think we can just go to the boss now. This is just me just kind of cleaning up here. Very nice. Let's get that one last chest, and then we will go take on the boss boss I I have only really beaten seven and eight the rest I ran out of patience mm. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I know for the mobile ports of a, a, or some of the ports of those later Final Fantasy games you can actually play it on like double speed and fast forward through stuff and I think you can even do like auto fights as well. Or they recognize that it was a little grindy even back then. For whatever reason, 7 just seems head and shoulders above any other JRPG I've tried. Huh. Alright then. How did we get to that stairwell again? Was it actually this? Okay, so square, square, heart, oh, diamond, diamond. This heart one is weird. I'm going to guess we have to go here. Let's go there and we'll figure it out. Except Parasite Eve. Okay. Did that... I don't... I was going to ask if that was one of the RPGs on the, the PlayStation Classic. I don't think it is, though. Yeah, I did buy a PlayStation Classic. I know it's not the best lineup of games, but I got it for 30 bucks and thought, like, hey, if I ever decide to go down the PlayStation 1 rabbit hole, because I didn't have a PlayStation growing up, and at... I think with at under three dollars a game, I figured, okay, let's just do it. So at some point, I, at least I have access to the that device, and I know it's not the best representation of PlayStation games at all, but it's something. And no, I don't think so either. I know that for PS3, they sold it as a classic title in the store. Okay. What would you say are your favorite games of that PS1 era? Guessing, yeah, Final Fantasy VII's probably up there for you. Were you a Metal Gear guy? Oh. Ian, oh man, I had such a time, tough time with this dungeon. Also, welcome back. I've been doing a lot smoother on this run, but yes, the first time I played it, I was really confused. Um, also, how you doing this evening, Ian? I You missed out on the part where I rage quit the stream. <laughs> uh, about 20 minutes into the first thing, I, I got really stuck, and I, I couldn't figure out like what I was supposed to do, and... 
it was so bad like I was reading a guide and I even with the guide I couldn't figure it out and then I realized that I'd forgotten how to kill the the shell guys where you have to block them first and then flip them and that was it and so I just got stuck on a really dumb thing and I have to restart the stream so if you go back and watch you will miss the first part of the angler tunnel but it's fine Whoa. Ah. Uh-oh. This is not looking great, by the way, for us. Hey, okay. I think we can do this now. And Faco's Pirate Robot says, Resident Evil 2, Parasite Eve, Resident, uh, Final Fantasy 7, 8, Metal Gear Solid. Probably in that order. Okay. I have not played pretty much any of those games. I played a little bit of RE2 Remake on PS4, the demo, and that seemed really cool. And at some point, I should pick that up. That's probably a Boxing Day game for me. Uh, Parasite Eve, yeah, that that never came back. Uh, 7 and 8, I do have 7. Uh, Metal Gear I have access to as well. I hate stealth games with a passion, but maybe that's the one. And you used to grind... RE2 over a weekend. Yeah, RE4 is probably my favorite. I played through that game like many times over. And then it had this like score attack mode where you had to kill as many zombies or get as many points from killing zombies as you could. And I, yeah, I grinded that mode to oblivion. Yeah, Ian, how are you doing this evening? So yeah, let's go get this this one, and then we'll go to the boss. Oh, we had to go here anyway to get the key. All right, give me your mask, punks. Suckers. And now. I can't remember. This heart one probably where I have to go. I think. I'm good today. Was up and down, but I'm in a pretty good mood. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that you are in a good mood today. Or at least at, in the moment. Because, yeah, whatever you have to do to get yourself in the right state of mind is... Uh, Yeah, can't knock the hustle on that. So I'm, gl I'm glad to hear you are doing well this evening. Um, I don't think you've missed too much on the stream. I mean, Fake Ghost Fire Robot and I have been talking about assorted um, PlayStation games and upcoming game conventions here. And I got to run for now, but if you grab a Sega Classic, check out Comic Zone. That is one I've always wanted to play. That is one, like, I remember specifically reading video game magazines and seeing that game and thinking, oh my god, this looks like the future. I want to play this. So, yes. If I do get a, play a Sega Classic, I will pick that up. Actually, um, my cousin saw that post, and uh, let's go flip the camera here. My cousin saw that post, and she messaged me like, hey, do you want one? My My husband bought it, and he doesn't really play it. So, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll at least borrow it from her at some point. And then you say, alternate title could just be the 90s. Yes, <laughs> that game is 90s AF. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for dropping by Th Fate Goes By a Robot. Thank you so much for the bits. Again, um, always appreciate your support. Uh, I've never forgotten how you've helped me get this stream set up. And um, always thankful for that. Uh, take care. Uh, I hope your kids are doing well, and I'll see you next time. See ya. Alright, boss time. Always glad to help out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Couldn't have done this without you, man. 
So, you are the outsider. Oh, man, that just went. I shall eat you. All right. Oh, this one. This boss messed me up. This one was a little weird. Of like having to... There was a lot happening here. I think I, I might be doing it wrong as well. Oh. Oh, yeah, you have to pull it out and then hit the, the sides. And, like, I'm just completely out of position here. Ah! Come on. I didn't save. I should probably save. It might be too late to save. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This is not looking good. Oh no. We haven't landed a single hit on this guy. Okay. No! If you're just tuning in, I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com, personal look at video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits, and we are playing Link's Awakening and trying to trying to beat this boss. Yeah, this boss is a little tricky. I think we're going to beat this boss. I might continue the fetch quest stuff. Um, and then we'll probably call it a night. Um, Ian, have you beaten the game yet? Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Are there any... Alright, well, we're just going with these hearts. Not as prepared as we could have been for this fight, but... That's how I roll. YOLO. I'm never the most prepared for anything. <laughs> ah. Oh, come on. Nope. Last play session, I finished this dungeon, and I've been trying to power through my current Fire Emblem run when I get the time to play. Ah. Yeah, I beat I beat Link's Awakening, and it it's very good. I don't think it has any sort of, like, dip in quality throughout, so I really enjoyed my time with this one. Ah, come on. Of course, it totally doesn't look like I've beaten this game before when I stream it because I just forget everything. Uh-oh. Oh, no! Hey! You don't seem to know what kind of island this is! Hey, what a fool! I'm partly taking Link's Awakening slowly because I know it is short and I want to savor it. It would be super easy to beat in a weekend. Yes. Yes, it would. <laughs> I beat it. I beat it in a week. Um, but I know you are much better at these games than I am. So you probably finish this super quick. Do, 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 do. You got the win, Marimba. Links. The island secret in the shrine.
what? <laughs>